All right, so some of you might remember this PC build right here. This is the four liter Velka 3 gaming PC, which has an RTX 2070 and a six core CPU. And four liters, just to put that into some perspective, typical mid tower gaming PCs are around 50 to 60 liters. ITX PCs usually are around the 20 liter mark. And this is four liters, so it can fit in pretty much any backpack out there. And if your pockets are big enough, it might even fit there too. So with our initial build that we did about a few months ago, we did have one big problem though, and that was with the power supply fan noise. So I concluded in that video that that build was not really usable due to how loud the power supply fan was and that I would only really recommend this build and case if you were prepared to swap that fan to something a bit quieter like a Noctua. So that is exactly what we have done in this video. I'm going to show you how to do it and have a look at the results. Spoiler alert, the results here are actually pretty nice and definitely worth doing. There is also another alternative to power this system and we'll look at that towards the end, but basically cable management is a lot better and power supply noise is eliminated because it's a passively cooled power supply solution. So that's what we're looking at today. Now, for those of you who missed the initial video on this build and case, let me give you a quick rundown of exactly what you're looking at. The Velka 3 is a completely aluminum small form factor PC case. And the thing that makes it so special, which most of you could probably tell by this point, is just how small this thing actually is. In fact, it's the smallest case in the world to accommodate a discrete graphics card. And don't be quick to call this a low power ITX machine for casual gaming. The build that you're looking at right now has an RTX 2060, a six core i5 9400, 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory, and one terabyte of M.2 NVMe storage. All of that in just a four liter volume, that's pretty mental. The power supply noise though was pretty deafening and ruined an otherwise perfect build. The CPU and GPU were running relatively cool and quiet. There were no issues there at all. So let's go ahead and try swapping that insanely loud fan on our Flex ATX power supply unit. And the power supply that I've got here is the 400 watt 80 plus gold model from FSP. The stock fan that's in there at the moment is a 40 mil fan that's 15 mils thick. And so I wanted to try both the 10 mil and 20 mil thick options from Noctua at the same diameter. Both of these are 12 volt PWM options with your standard four pin PWM header. So you can plug it directly into your motherboard and have full control over it there, depending on your system load. Your other option is of course to rewire it to the two pin 12 volt DC header that the power supply currently uses. That's totally up to you. Now disassembling the Flex ATX unit is pretty easy. A couple of screws on either side and then one at the top. And then you can remove one of the covers and reveal the internals. Now I will take this moment to somewhat stress the obvious precautions when it comes to working with open power supplies. Although all of the capacitors that you see here are insulated and pretty much impossible to short from the top, just don't be dumb. Don't poke your screwdriver around and don't reach deep into the PCB. We're just going to be worrying about the fan head on the left. Removing the fan is pretty simple. It's just a two pin plug, which you can just carefully remove with your fingertips. Now, although the stock fan was just 15 mils thick, I really wanted to try and cram in the 20 mil thick Noctua model as opposed to the 10 mil model to make sure that we're not compromising on airflow and thermal performance of the PSU. I tried super hard to get this fan to fit, but no matter what you do, it's still going to be blocked by the PCB right behind it. So here we have to settle for the slimmer model instead. All right, so I've got the power supply connected directly to the motherboard and I've got it set to ramp up based on CPU temperature. Specifically, when the CPU surpasses 50 degrees C, the power supply fan will ramp up to 100%. Below that threshold, it will idle between 30 to 50% fan speed. Now, 100% speed for this little fan means 5,000 RPM, which actually isn't that bad at all. Here's an idea of what that sounds like. For some improved cable management, I also went ahead and removed one of the SATA and Molex connector strips. Two of these strips for this power supply was just kind of unnecessary, and I can just reattach it if I really need to. So, booting up a game, the results are fine. 
about what you would expect, much, much less noise while the system is at full load. The test here was whether the system would shut down due to the power supply overheating, but luckily that just didn't happen. If you feel the back of the power supply where the air is being exhausted, you can definitely feel a bit of warm air, which is a good thing. But other than that, this mod seems totally safe to do. Of course, proceed at your own risk. You might have a different experience if your climate is a lot warmer, or if you somehow have a more power hungry configuration in this case case, which is definitely not easy to do. The main noise was now coming from the RTX 2070, so I spent about 5 minutes undervolting it to 870 millivolts in MSI Afterburner, and that dropped the thermals from the mid 70s to the low 60s. I recently did a full video on how to undervolt your GPU, it's quite simple and most people are just not doing it, and the benefits aren't just limited to small cases like this, even if you have a larger case with a more power hungry GPU like a 2080 Ti or a Vega 64 or something like that for example you can still get massive drops in terms of thermals and fan noise. So if you are interested in checking that out, video will be linked down below. It is highly recommended. All right, but if you don't want to go through the hassle of swapping the fan on the Flex ATX unit, there is actually a really solid alternative. And that's this right here, the tiny HD Plex 400 watt DC to ATX power supply. Technically, it's only half of the power supply chain, DC to ATX. The AC to DC portion of the power is taken care of by a Dell power brick and the one that I've got here is rated for up to 330 watts. The main drawback of this approach is whereas the previous build was fully standalone and contained within the case, this build means that you'll also need to carry around an external power brick. This itself is a significant volume, it's about a third of the size of the Velka 3 and so if you're planning on using this build for portability, definitely keep this in mind. The positive though is that you won't need to bother with any fan swaps or any fan noise at all for that matter, as both the power brick and the HD Plex 400 are passively cooled. I did have some issues with installation in the Velka 3 though, supposedly the mounting holes at the bottom of the case are meant to line right up, but it looks like it's blocked by the power supply button on the inside. Same situation with the included bracket for the plug, it just doesn't seem to line up properly with the HD Plex model that I've got right here. So I just went ahead and used some really strong double sided tape for mounting here instead, which worked surprisingly well. Here's how the finished installation looks at the bottom. The HD Plex 400 is a fair bit smaller than the Flex ATX unit we were using before, so you do have a bit more flexibility with cable management as well. The finished build here is a lot more straightforward seeing as more than half the build process is actually managing the cables inside this case. With the HD Plex though, you can just route the cables somewhat sensibly and you can get the front panel on no problem. And the results here too were fine, just fine, nothing really to say, no issues at full load, no noise, the power supply setup runs perfectly fine with our i5-9400 and RTX 2070. And again, undervolting the GPU will help bring the power consumption down also to just give you a bit of extra peace of mind, but it was fine at stock too. Now although the Noctua modded Flex ATX unit was significantly quieter than before we modded, the silent power supply setup here is a decent bit quieter yet again. In my opinion, this would be the preferred setup for a build that will mostly stay on your desk, seeing as you can easily hide the power brick out of sight. All in all, it looks like you can actually build this more without compromising too much on the noise performance and performance in general of your gaming system. I'll say it again, it really is surreal to get this much gaming performance from such a tiny brick of a PC. If you're bringing this thing to a competitive LAN, you've got a pretty decent competitive edge when it comes to frame rate. But even if you're not interested in portability and a LAN gaming PC or something that you can put in your backpack, I understand that not many people have that that sort of use case, personally I don't either. This sort of system would work quite well for just a minimal desktop PC for gaming and video editing. The HD Plex power supply solution with the external power brick would be my preferred setup there too, seeing as you can just easily hide the power brick out of sight. So if you are interested in any of the PC hardware discussed today, including the Velka 3 PC case, you can find that linked down below in the description. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.